everyone. Welcome into One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back today doing another set guide and review, and this time it is for the tobacco inspired and pop culture influenced 2022 Topps Allen and Ginter. It's one of Topps' most weirdest sets of the year. Some people like it, some people hate it. But what does the set have to offer? Is it a set you should be buying into? Is it one you should stay away from? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is with One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Tops Allen & Ginter Set Guide and Review. Let's jump right in. So Tops Allen and Ginter has finally dropped. It normally comes out in the middle of the summer, but here we are in November and we finally have it. And what we're trying to do in this set guide and review is find out how good Tops Allen and Ginter really is this year. We do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set rating, which is the most in-depth rating system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. Here's what we're covering off on today. We're going to start with the set highlights, tell you in general what the set is all about, tell you the different buying formats you can get it in, dig a little bit deeper, tell you what the key cards that we're going to be chasing are, cover off on all the parallels, inserts, relics, and autos, and I'm even going to give you six teams that I think you should target in breaks. And If you want to know how good all the teams are, including the non-baseball team that we get exclusive in Allen & Ginter, check out my break team cheat sheet which we'll share later in the video. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set rating where we find out how good Topps Allen and Ginter really is. And we'll sum it all up by telling you how it stacks up with all of the other sets that have been released so far in the card collecting season. But before we begin, I got one more thing. Be sure to throw over to first and hit that like button for me. It's the best way you can support the channel. And if you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you want to see them first, you got to hit the bell notification so that way you know as soon as they drop. And if you haven't done so already, check out my Patreon page. That's how you get into my breaks. That's where you get break discounts. That's where you get PSA submissions at no additional charge and so much more Discord community access. There's a link in the video description below and I invite you to check it out. So let's dig right in. Tops. Allen and Ginter. First thing you need to know, it is one of the most eclectic. It is tobacco inspired. It's a set that features baseball and cultural icons. It's a set that pays homage to the late 1800 tobacco manufacturer Allen and Ginter, who actually created the first trading cards in the United States. And A&G goes way beyond baseball. It features cultural icons and interesting topics just like the Allen and Ginter sets did so long ago. In its newest form, it is in its 16th year of production, started back in 2006, and it is available in hobby and retail formats. This year's checklist has 350 cards. Cards number 301 through 350 are short prints. And if you are gutsy enough to rip a rip card, you can actually extend the set to 400 cards. Cards 351 through 400 are only found in the rip cards, which are exclusive to the Allen and Ginter set. There are also many tobacco sized versions of the base set that are printed, and you're going to find one of those per pack. In every hobby box, you're going to find three hits, and they can be all sorts of different hits relics, autos, rip cards, book cards, A and G original buybacks, cut signatures, just a ton of different stuff that we can get in this set. For our parallels, they're mainly in the mini cards, and they feature color, they feature back variations, and all sorts of different materials like wood and metal for a total of 12 parallels. There are 13 different insert sets, five different relic sets, and six different auto sets for 2022. And of course, the rip cards return. There's single rip cards, double rip cards, and triple rip cards available in hobby boxes. We also have box toppers available in the hobby format. Finally, there are hot boxes available, and those will come with silver portrait versions, and they land one per pack, and I think you can get two hot boxes per case of Allen & Ginter. 
what are the different buying formats? We start with hobby. And with hobby, we have 12 boxes per case. If you're looking for a case, 24 packs per box, eight cards per pack. That's going to give you 2,304 total cards for a cost online right now of about $1,410. That gets you to a cost per card of 61 cents, which you're guaranteed to get 36 hits. And they can be autos, relics, rip cards, booklets, ANGs, all sorts of things, 288 minis, and 12 box loaders. You can also get a hobby box. That's going to have 24 packs per box, eight cards per pack, 192 total cards. Current online price, about $120. So that Gets you your cost per card up to 63 cents. You're going to get three hits in the box, 12 minis, and one box loader. But we also have retail. For retail, we have a blaster box. That's going to give you eight packs per box, six cards per pack for 48 total cards. Current price, 25 bucks. Cost per card, 52 cents. And you are guaranteed to get one 2006 Allen & Ginter rookie design variation. You can also get a Val pack. That's going to have three packs plus one five card gold parallel pack. That's going to have six cards per pack, 23 total cards. Cost you around 10 bucks, and your cost per card is going to go down to 43 cents. Fat packs are also available 14 cards per pack, 14 total cards, about five, six bucks for a current price, and the cost per card is going to be 36 cents. Individual gravity feed packs have been available in the past, so be on the lookout for those. And don't be surprised if you see additional formats based on different retail locations. So what are the key cards we're going to be chasing? Well, as always, we start with the rookies. Leading us off is going to be Wander Franco. Then we get to O'Neill Cruz, Brandon Marsh, Bobby Witt Jr., Julio Rodriguez, C.J. Abrams, Mackenzie Gore, Spencer Torkelson, Stephen Kwan, Hunter Green, Bryson Stott, Seiya Suzuki, Royce Lewis, Alec Thomas, and Jeremy Pena, fresh off a World Series MVP. A couple names missing on that. I don't know why Spencer Strider keeps getting the snub, but he does. He is not in here. But for the most part, we have all of the big rookies you will be looking for. For our parallels, autos, inserts, relics, there's a ton of different things that we can find in Allen and Ginter. We start with the parallel mini rookie cards. Those are going to hold value because they are parallels. We also have a very cool mini set with the 2021 World Series champions, and that's, of course, going to be all Atlanta Braves. We get the A&G framed originals. Those are buybacks, and they're all one of ones. We also have the framed mini cloth cards available only in Hobby. We have the mini metal and stained glass cards available in Hobby and Rip cards. There's also... The rookie design variations. Now, that's not the 2006 design, but those are ones that are exclusive to the hobby format. We have a very hard mini insert that is called the Still Searching insert, which is only available in hobby. And we have DNA relics, literally fossils of dinosaurs that are in a relic card. Just super cool card right there. We have the framed mini relics, and then we have the pitching a gem relics, which actually has a gem as a relic. We have the autographed dual relic book cards and cut signatures available and the framed mini autos. That's what is over there on the right with the Josh Donaldson card. And of course, rip cards. They're available in single, double, and triple rip. And you can also get full size autos and dual autos. That's where you're going to find a lot of those late season rookies. That's where their autos live. For our base parallels, kind of a complicated parallel breakdown, but we'll try and keep it simple. First, we have the full-size parallels. Very easy. That's got a silver portrait, which is only available in hot boxes for hobby, and a glossy one of one. And then we go over to the minis. Now, you're going to find minis one per pack, but within those, you can find ones that have the Allen and Ginter back. Those are one in five packs. Black borders, one in ten packs. No numbers, which are numbers on the back. They do not have the number, and those are limited to 50, but not numbered. There's the Brooklyn back, which is numbered to 25. Then we have the gold border, one of ones in retail, the wood, one of ones in hobby, the glossy, one of ones, and the framed printing plates. Then we have the short print mini parallels. That's going to be for those high numbers. That's one through, that's 301 
through 350. So those land 1 in 13 packs, and those have an Allen and Ginter back, which land 1 in 65 packs. Black Border, which land 1 in 130 packs. No numbers, limited to 50. Brooklyn backs to 25. Gold Border, 1 of 1s. Wood, 1 of 1. And a Glossy, 1 of 1. Also have the many partial parallels. What do I mean by partial? Well, they don't have the full set in them. Most of them only have like 150 cards. So we can get the mini metal cards, which you see over there on the right with the trout. There's 150 of those, and they're all limited to three. Then we have the mini stained glass cards, 150 cards in that set, and they're limited to 25. Then we have the frame mini printing plates, one of one, and the frame mini cloth, which is 150 cards, all numbered to 10, only found in hobby boxes. So very complicated, but plenty of parallels, just not what you're used to seeing in, say, like a chrome set or something like that, where it's just a bunch of different colors. So let's cover off on the inserts. We'll start with the full size inserts. We have Banner Seasons. There's going to be 50 cards in that subset featuring great seasons of baseball players. Famous Rivals, which you can see over there on the right, it does not cover off on baseball, it covers off on rivals in other areas of life. Get that bread, which covers off on bread and meat pairings. It's your special day, which covers off on special days throughout the calendar year. Pitching a gem, which is a baseball one. That's got 25 cards in the subset. What's cooking, which has 10 cards, which is a very interesting little insert set because if you combine all 10 cards together, it actually makes a recipe. For our many inserts, we have the 2006 A&G Rookie Design. There's 20 cards in the subset, and they are only found in blasters. Then we have the 2021 World Series Champion inserts, 20 cards in that subset. The Baseball Lexicon, which uses a lot of the language that baseball uses, 20 cards in that subset. Bearing Fruit, which has fruit as a subject matter, 18 cards in the subset, and a fairly tough pull. I think they land only like one in 30 packs or something like that. We have Ducks, which is pretty self-explanatory. 10 cards in that set. Inside the Park, which actually does not cover off on home runs, but rather National Parks. And that's got 32 cards in the subset. Then we have Still Searching, which is searching for mythical animals. Very hard, super short print. If you get one, it's actually going to be pretty valuable. 10 cards in the subset. Then we have Time Out, 10 cards in that one as well. Finally, we have What a Steal, which is actually, you can see over there on the right, things that have been stolen for really cheap in the past. So kind of an interesting play on words right there, 10 cards in that subset. We also have Box Topper inserts. First, we start with the A and G box loaders. That's what the Soto is over there on the right. 15 cards in that subset. And they do come in an autograph version, all numbered to 15 or less. Interestingly, there's 19 cards in that subset. Then we have the A and G N43 box loaders. 23 cards in the subset, taking some of the tobacco-inspired stuff that Alan and Ginter is so famous for with the M43. 20 cards in the subset. And the autograph version, 10 cards in that set, numbered 15 or less. We also have the inside the park box loaders, which are large versions of the mini insert, 15 cards in the subset, and they are limited to 500. For our relics, we have the ANG full size relic, 115 cards in the relic set. Then we have the ANG mini framed relics. That's the one you see over there on the right. 62 cards in that set. Then we have the mini D and A relics. That's seven cards in the set. They feature fossils of the actual dinosaur, and they are numbered to 25 or less, and you can only find them in hobby. We have the pitching a gem relics, 10 cards in that subset. A and G framed originals. Those are original Allen and Ginter cards. There's a hundred of them, and of course, they are all one of ones. Or our autographs. Start with the Allen and Ginter framed mini non baseball autographs. That's what the Rob Riggle card is over there on the right. 49 cards in the non baseball card set, 
with a small parallel rainbow of black frame and red ink. Then we have the baseball version. 77 cards in that subset with the same parallel breakdown. We have the ANG framed mini TOPS employee autos, and those are actually autographs of TOPS employees, 10 cards in that subset, and they are pretty rare and hard to pull. The ANG full size autos, that's going to have 12 cards in the subset. You can get a parallel red ink to 10. We also have the ANG full size dual autos, that's got four cards in the set. And the, there's a parallel breakdown of red ink to 10. We have a few more autographs. We have the Allen and Ginter autographed relic books, 54 cards, and they're all numbered to 10. There's also the A&G dual autographed relic books, 22 cards. And then we have the cut signatures. Very cool names in here. They are like Audrey Hepburn's in here. There's just some awesome names. In, Unbelievable names. If you pull one, really hard to pull, but very valuable. They're all one of ones. And of course, we have the rip cards. We'll start with the Allen and Ginter single rip card. There's 100 cards in that subset, and they are all serial numbered. Each card contains one mini card inside of it. Then we have the Allen and Ginter dual rips. There's 50 cards in that subset. They are all serial numbered and they contain too many cards. You can see what that looks like over there on the right. Finally, we have the Allen and Ginter box loader triple rip card, three mini cards inside, 30 cards in the subset, and they are all serial numbered. One other thing to note, you can also find many artist original sketch sets. They did not say how many cards were in the set, but they are all one of ones, and you can only find those in rip cards. So that's everything. You almost got to take a breath to take in all that Allen and Ginter has to offer. But with so many autos, with so many relics, so many inserts, the question becomes, what are the teams that you should be targeting in breaks? Well, like I said, I'm going to give you six. And the first team I'm going to give you is what I think the best team is. And that is actually the non-baseball team. That's got 47 base cards. 171 inserts, 81 autos, and 25 relics. That includes those amazing cut signatures you can get, all of the different pop culture icons, and all of the different inserts. It really is without question the best team quotes that you can get in Allen and Ginter. If you're buying into a pick your team break, this will by far be the most expensive spot, but it will also return the most value. You are almost guaranteed to get two or three autos out of a case, maybe even more when we're talking about all of those pop culture icons that you can get, and it's going to return a very nice value. Think about things like the DNA relic, etc. Very good team to get in a random team break you'll have to see how the breaker does the non-team spot some people still only sell 30 spots and then randomize the non-team spot that's what i do others sell that spot as a 31st spot in the break so just check with the breaker to see how they handle that non-baseball team spot and go from there my next team is going to be the team with the most autos. That's going to be the New York Yankees. And the Yankees are probably the best team that isn't the non-baseball team. So that comes with 19 base cards, one rookie card, 61 different inserts, 16 autos, and 21 relics, and 16 different rip cards. The names you're going to be looking for, Aaron Judge, Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, Bernie Williams, Garrett Cole, Roger Clemens, just a ton of different content, a ton of different autos. They've got 21 relics, 16 different rip cards. They're going to provide a ton of value, and they're also going to be pretty expensive in a pick your team break. So if you're a Yankees fan, probably a good one. If you are a fan of chasing kind of the big hit, this would also be a good one to target in a pick your team break. If you get them in a random team break, go ahead and keep them because you've probably got the second best team in the entire set. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, you got to go look at the Minnesota Twins. 
They've got 16 base cards, five rookie cards, 22 inserts, 10 autos, six relics, and six rip cards. The names you're going to be looking for on the auto checklist, Byron Buxton, Dave Winfield, Rod Carew. There's a lot of those rookie autos. Now, to be fair, a lot of those rookies aren't big names, at least as of yet. But you do have a decent amount of content, and I believe that the Minnesota Twins will be kind of a middle-of-the-road team. So if you're in a pick-your-team break and like targeting rookies, I think there's a little bit of a value play that you're going to find with the Minnesota Twins. I also think in a random team break, it might be a pretty easy team to trade for. But don't sleep on the Twins. But if you're looking for a solid choice, just go look at the Angels. They've got eight base cards, not a ton of base content, only one rookie card. But then when we get into the other areas, they've got 23 inserts, nine autos, six relics, 13 different rip cards. And the names you're looking for on the auto checklist, Trout, Otani, Reggie Jackson, Nolan Ryan. We got a couple rookies and Brandon Marsh and Reed Detmers. And they also have the second most amount of rip cards right behind the Yankees. So the Angels, when we get out of the base set, start really kind of expanding the, the value that they have. So in a pick your team break, again, an expensive team, but probably going to provide pretty good value, especially if you can hit one of those Trout or Otani autos. In a random team break, hold them. Don't trade them. You're probably not going to be able to trade for them either. So just stand pat if you get them in a random team break. Going to give you two sleepers as well. My first sleeper, the Boston Red Sox. They've got 14 base cards, one rookie card, 40 inserts, nine autos, 12 relics, and nine rip cards. We go right back to that auto checklist. A very good one for the Red Sox. David Ortiz, Xander Bogarts. Pedro Martinez, Roger Clemens, Rafael Devers, and the list kind of goes on from there. They've also got 40 different inserts. They've got nine rip cards, so we go to the content. They've got a ton of it, and with the quality names that they have on the auto checklist, along with the amount of content they have, I think they're a really good team, but they haven't been a very good team in 2022 for card collecting in general. So you might be able to make a trade for the Red Sox in a random team break, and they're probably still going to be top 10 in a pick your team in, a, in regards to expense. But if they drop out of the top 10, there's going to be real value with the Red Sox. So don't sleep on them. My other sleeper, the St. Louis Cardinals, 14 base cards, two rookie cards, 23 inserts, 12 autos, four relics, and seven rip cards. The auto checklist, solid. Albert Pulhos, Lou Brock, Paul Goldschmidt, Mark McGuire, a couple rookies, Juan Yepes, Lars Nupar. And I really think that where it shines is with the autos. You've got 12 autos. That is the third most autos per team in the set behind the non-baseball team and the New York Yankees. The Cardinals are not going to be a top 10 team they will probably be middle of the road but when you start looking at those names there's very good names there plus you've got seven rib cards you don't have that many relics so don't expect to hit much there but i believe that if you can get this in a pick your team break middle of the road probably like average price of whatever a case goes for divided by 30 that would be your target price there and a random team break you very much could trade for the Cardinals. Not a lot of people are going to be afraid to trade the Cardinals. So definitely try to make the trade there. And I believe that their rookies are a little bit underrated. Juan Yepes, Lars Nupar had some pretty good rookie seasons, maybe not superstar seasons, but there's a lot of potential there in the future. So the St. Louis Cardinals going to be my second sleeper. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these teams. I love responding back to all of the comments that are worth responding to, and I would love to hear from you. So the next question becomes, well, how good are all 30 teams? Well, I've broken it all down into a cheat sheet for you, and here's how this works. The top tier is going to be the teams that I think are going to provide the most value. The second tier teams are going to be the teams that 
Although they're not bad, they're not going to hit every time in a break. And then there's my bottom tier, which are the teams that I would recommend you steer clear of. So let's start with the top tier. Obviously, we have the non-baseball card team, but they don't have a logo. But I'm going to say that they would probably be above the top tier. That's how good that is. So let's just cover off on the 30 teams. We've got Tampa Bay, obviously, with Wander Franco. And then we've got Julio Rodriguez with Seattle. But then we have a couple other ones in here. For example, the Cubs, a little bit of a surprise here. They move up. They have a surprising amount of content and a very nice auto checklist as well. We covered off on Boston. The Reds also have a ton of rookies and they have a ton of autos as well. So the Reds, another solid team. These are the teams that I think kind of end up being the most expensive, but I've got my sleepers in there too. But that brings me to my second tier. A little bit of a surprise here and that I have the Pirates and the Tigers both in the second tier. Obviously, they have some big rookies in 2022, but they don't have a lot of other content outside of O'Neill Cruz and Spencer Torkelson. That being said, if you are chasing those players as a rookie, not a bad team to buy into. Just don't expect to get a lot of other content. We have the Orioles that bump up into the second tier. They've been a bottom tier team most of the season, but because of a lot of the Hall of Fame autos that they have, the Orioles are an interesting team. And the other interesting team in this tier is probably the Washington Nationals. They have a C.J. Abrams signature while he's on the Nationals, which is his first signature in a Nationals uniform. So very interesting there, especially considering they also have Juan Soto still showing up as a national on that team. So don't sleep on the Nationals either. For the third tier, the teams I would recommend to stay away from, one surprise down here, the Philadelphia Phillies. They've kind of been all over the board this season, but overall they've been a decent team in 2022 for card collecting. But in this set, they just don't have a lot to offer. The auto checklist is a little weak. They do have enough content, but I just don't think you're going to find a lot of value there. And then we have kind of some usual su suspects that we've seen down here all season. The Rockies, the Guardians, the A's, and the Rangers have all been subpar teams for most of the season. The Marlins kind of go up and down, but again, just not a lot to offer here. And with the Brewers, again, we get a Christian Yelich obligatory auto and not much else. So those are the teams that we have on the break team cheat sheet, all broken down real easy. Take a screen grab of it and go buy into your next break. In the meantime, what we'll do is get to the one cent sensational set rating. So here's what that is. It's the most in-depth rating system for a set you're going to find anywhere on the internet. What I do is I break the set down into 10 different categories, each one being worth one to 10 points. Then once we've gone through all the categories, we add up all the points, and that's what gives us our final one cent sensational set score. And we use the scale below to find out how good the set really is. Then we compare Allen and Ginter 2022 with the sets that were released in 2021 and 2020 to see if the set's getting better or worse. And then we'll compare it to all of the other sets that have come out in the 2022 card collecting season to see how it stacks up against those. So without further ado, let's get into the categories. My first category is going to be appeal. So appeal shouldn't be 6.7. It should be 6.5. That's a typo, but we're not going to worry about that. Allen and Ginter is an interesting set because some people love it and some people hate it. Some people cannot stand the fact that they open up a baseball card pack and it doesn't have baseball subjects inside. Other people go, boy, this is nostalgia inspired. This is exactly what it would have been like in the 1800s opening up Allen and Ginter tobacco packs. And they love that. Allen and Ginter packs way back in the day had all sorts of different content in there. So it's not for everyone, but I do think there's a segment of the hobby that really likes it. And I do think that there's a segment of nostalgic people that really, really like Allen and Ginter. So I give it a 6.5. 
For our base set checklist, I'm going to give it an eight. It is a very strong checklist for Allen and Ginter in 2022. Part of that being that it got released so much later in the year than it normally does. It normally comes out in July. It's coming out in November now. But because of that, we get most of the rookies that were called up in 2022. So it makes for a very strong checklist. When we look at the auto checklist, huge Hall of Fame names, huge pop culture icons, and huge rookie names all throughout. There's a little bit of filler, so I can't go higher, but I am going to give it an eight. For our inserts, parallels, relics, variations, stuff like that, I give it a seven. Now, I know this is a very large insert set. Some of them are a little bit over the top, like the bread one this year, I think is a little over the top. And the parallel rainbow is a very hard rainbow to approach if you are new to the hobby. You got things like Brooklyn backs, no numbers, and it just is a little bit hard to approach. I think a lot of people are groomed to think color, and that is not what you do here with Allen and Ginter. But overall, I think when we talk about the relics and everything, we're in a pretty strong area, so I give it a seven. For our production run in pack odds, Allen & Ginter is produced in mass quantity. Maybe not quite as much as flagship, but probably in line with heritage and things like that. Because of that, the, the pack odds are going to be long and the production run is going to be high. So I'm going to give it a three. For our card quality, it's got a very vintage cardboard stock, a little bit thicker than a Series 1 stock. And it's got a little bit more of that cardboard feel. I really like it. It's got a nostalgic feel to it. So I'm going to give it a seven. And then for historical value, I've got it at a 3.5. And here's why. For our standard baseball card set, when we take out all of the pop culture stuff and all of the quirky inserts, these rookie cards and the parallels are not going to hold the same value that a chrome set would or that a high-end set would or even flagship. Some of the relics, some of the parallels, and some of the autos that you can pull out of here are worth a lot though, but some of those are very long odds. So when we talk about value in general, not one of the more valuable sets it is a little bit more of a value brand overall, so I give it a 3.5. Then we got cost value, which is how much return on your dollar are you getting if you buy a box of this, let's say. Boxes are $120. You do get three hits, which is a pretty low cost per hit at around $40. On top of that, if you are able to hit some of these nicer autos, maybe a big rookie auto or a nice pop culture auto, you can very much get your return on your money from an Allen & Ginter box. Allen & Ginter also kind of appreciates a little bit over time, not too much, but the boxes don't generally lose value either. So overall, I think you're doing pretty good. I'm going to give it a six. For artistic value, I really like what Allen & Ginter does. They bring the nostalgic feel and the old school tobacco vibe of tobacco cards in with a lot of the new feel of parallels and relics, and they do a very nice mixture of that. They also push the envelope on what you can get out of an insert, and they've got things like DNA relics. So some very cool out-of-the-box thinking that goes into Allen and Ginter. So I go ahead and give it an 8.5. And then we have collectability, which is, hey, how fun is this stuff to collect? Don't worry about how valuable it is. Don't worry about how much you can resell it for. How fun is Allen & Ginter? Well, if you're a set collector, a very challenging, very attractive set to collect because you've got all the minis. You can do, you can do the full size. You can do all of the high number short prints, and it's a very challenging set to collect. If you're a budget collector, a very fun set to rip that is an affordable price tag. You get plenty of hits in a box. And then you've got all sorts of quirkiness involved as well, which adds to that nostalgic feel. So I think for a large segment of the hobby, maybe not so much for your investor types, but for true collectors, this set can get really fun, 
but I also get it's not for everyone. But overall, I think if you look at it very much from a nostalgic point of view, one of the more fun sets to collect in all of the baseball card season. So I go ahead and give it a nine. So what we're going to do, we're going to add up all of those scores. And for 2022, Tops Allen and Ginter scores a 65.5 on the one cent sensational set rating scale, which makes it a very good set, kind of middle of the road, very good set. It's normally not going to score much higher or much lower than this simply because it doesn't appeal to everyone. Your investor types, your people that like the chromium stuff, flippers, stuff, people like that are not going to be all that interested in Allen and Ginter. Your vintage folks, your people that like the nostalgic vibe of baseball cards, and also people that like something that's a little bit more than just baseball cards, goes into pop culture a little bit. That's where you're going to find the real people that follow this set. So we get a 65.5. In 2021, it actually scored very similar. It had a 66. And in 2020, it scored a little bit higher with a 67. So you can see a very consistent set year over year. If you are someone that likes Allen and Ginter, you look forward to this set being released as soon as the new card collecting season begins. If you are the type that says, hey, I don't want bread and sandwiches in my baseball card things. I don't want ducks in national parks. This probably isn't the set for you. Investors probably going to stay away from stuff other than the very long, maybe the cut signatures and stuff like that. But if you're a collector and if you like kind of quirky and you like nostalgic, this is a great set to look at. So. How does Allen and Ginter rank with all of the other sets that have come out so far in the card collecting season? Well, it comes in 10th out of 32 major releases for 2022. So like I said, it's a very good set. Bowman Baseball still leads the way at 78. And then we have a few of the higher end sets like Museum and Immaculate and Luminaries kind of rounding out the top 10 a little bit cosmic chrome which also just came out a very good set if you like the modern stuff so if you like modern maybe you look at cosmic chrome if you like nostalgic maybe you look at allen and ginter but overall i think allen and ginter i'm happy that it came in in the top 10 this late in the card collecting season the top 10 this year has been a little bit different than it has in the last couple years. We're seeing some different sets in there, which I think really speaks to the shift in focus that Fanatics is putting on with tops. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do I have this rated too low? Do I have it high? Are you getting into Allen and Ginter? Are you excited about it? Are you staying away? For me, it's one of my favorite sets of the year because I like that it's fun and you never know what you're going to get. It's kind of like going fishing. And with that, guys, as you're out there in the wild and you're looking for Allen and Ginter, I hope you find some. And when you open it, I hope you find some fire in the packs. And until next time, take care of your family, take care of your friends, take care of your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourselves. Thank you for watching. Throw over to first, hit that like button for me, subscribe, hit the bell notification, do what you know you need to do, and we'll do it again soon. Thanks for watching.